Hello, my name is Joy Lambert and I am the Child and Adolescent Studies Librarian at Pollock Library. This video will be a review of the CAS 301 APA Psych Info exercise. As CAS majors, APA Psych Info will be a great database that will be very helpful to you in your research across many classes. For the purposes of this exercise, we will pretend we are being asked to find articles that discuss the effects of dual immersion education on the language development of school-aged children. We need to find empirical articles that have been published within the last 10 years. Thankfully, APA Psych Info has some great tools that can help us find what we need. Before we get started, I would like to note that as each semester passes, the number of results in each section of the exercise will change because new articles are added all the time. The exact number of results is not important. What is important about the exercise is getting practice using the database. To get started, let's go to the database. Steps 1 through 4 of Section A tell us how to do that. Please go to library.fullerton.edu and then click on the databases icon. Next, use the All Subjects drop-down menu to select Child and Adolescent Studies. Click on APA Psych Info to enter the database. If you are off campus, you will be asked to proxy in. Just use your portal login info. Now that we're in the database, we can start our search, which is what Section B is all about. Although some of the tools we can use are available before the search, I like to start broadly. So I'm just going to start with keywords and then use the tools after. Research databases are not like Google, so we can't type in a question. We need to pick keywords out of our question or prompt and put those in the database to search. So I'm going to follow steps five through seven, and I'm going to enter dual immersion in the first box and language development in the second. and then click search. How many results do you have? This list is a little small in my opinion, and that can definitely happen as you start your research. As section C mentions, sometimes we have to broaden our searches to find articles that better meet our research needs. We can use Boolean connectors to help us create chains of search terms. Step eight asks us to add or bilingual education to the first box. Step nine asks us to leave the and drop-down menu and then add or language acquisition or language learning to the second box. You will see that the database will make suggestions of synonyms to help you broaden your search as soon as you type or. Now, as step 11 asks us to do, I will click search. How many results do you have now? Section D is all about refining our results. At the end of the exercise, you will find some brief information about the filters we will be using. This new list of results is much more robust and will hopefully have articles that will be helpful. Now we can use the tools the database has to offer to refine our results and find articles that meet the other criteria of our assignment. All of these tools can be found in the left margin. Step 12 asks us to look at the filters located in the left margin. Step 13 asks us to check the box for peer reviewed. These are articles that are reviewed by other experts in the field before they are published. Because we are looking for empirical articles, Step 14 asks us to open the methodology filter and select empirical study. Empirical studies are articles that discuss in detail original research studies that were done. Because we need to find articles published within the last 10 years, step 15 asks us to use the publication date filter to narrow our results by date of publication. And finally, because we want to focus our research on school-aged children, I will follow step 16 and open the menu for the age filter and select school age. Now how many results do you have? Section E discusses another way to further narrow our results by subject. 
Every article in the database has subject headings assigned to it to help describe what it is about and also to give us an additional way to refine our results. Step 17 asks us to open the menu for subject major heading and step 18 asks us to click show more. Here you see a list of the subject headings assigned to the articles in the list of results. Step 19 asks us to browse the list of subject headings. You can see there are many to choose from. Step 20 asks us to select bilingual education and language development and step 21 asks us to click update. Now how many results do you have? Section F is a heads up to let us know that sometimes during the process of using filters, APA Psych Info can remove some of them. No one knows why this happens and it doesn't happen every time, but just to be sure, keep an eye on your filters. If you look at the top left margin, you will see all of the filters that have been applied. If there are certain ones you need to have, like peer-reviewed articles or empirical articles, etc., Step 22 reminds us to take a look to make sure they are still being applied. If they aren't, you can just put them back on using the filters in the left margin. Section G is all about evaluating our results. We need to look through to see which articles will be most helpful in our research. Because we've used the filters, these articles should meet the criteria of the assignment and be closer in subject to what we are looking for. Step 23 asks us to click on the title of any article in the result list to see the information about the article. This is also called the record for the article. Step 24 asks us to look at the information contained in the record. As noted in the exercise, all of the important information about the article, including the pieces you'll need to build your citation and the abstract of the article are contained in the record. If you scroll down further, you'll also see the subject headings assigned to the article. These subject headings are what we saw when we opened the subject major heading filter. Also included in the record are other database tools. Step 25 asks us if there is a tool for generating an APA citation for the article. Yes, there is. And when you click on it, it will show you a list of examples of how to cite this article in various citation styles, including APA 7th edition. However, the citation the database generates is never 100% correct. Please use this example as a starting point and refer to your APA citation manual or other resource like Purdue OWL to make any necessary changes to make it correct. Step 26 asks us to click on the result list link or the back arrow to get back to our list of results. Once we find an article or articles we would like to read and use for our research, we need to track down the full text. Sections H and I of the exercise are all about doing that. Step 27 mentions how we can determine if the full text is available in APA Psych Info. Look for the PDF icon in the result list or in the record and click on that. From there you can download the PDF directly or you can email it to yourself. Sometimes the full text won't be available in the database you are searching, but it might be available in another library database. Step 28 tells us a way to find out is by clicking on the Find It at Pollock Library button. And Step 29 tells us if it is in another database, there will be a link. Follow that to the full text. The majority of the time, the full text of your articles will be available in a library database. However, sometimes they are not, in which case you would need to use Interlibrary Loan, which is discussed in Section I. Interlibrary Loan is the sharing of books and articles between libraries. If, after you click Find It at Pollock Library, you see a button that reads Sign In for More Options, that means the full text isn't in a library database and you need to get it from another library. Step 30 asks us to click on Sign In for more options, then use your portal login info to make your request. Step 31 asks us to follow the instructions to make our request. You may have multiple options. And finally, Section J is all about one final tool in APA Psych Info, which is the search history. APA Psych Info keeps track of the searches you have done, how you have built them, and the results for each search. This can be helpful if you're doing a lot of different searches or searching multiple databases. Step 32 asks you to return to your list of results. 
From there, step 33 asks you to click on search history below the search boxes. This will show you the searches you have done in reverse chronological order, any limiters or search options you have used, and the number of results for each search. And finally, step 34 asks you to record the number of searches you have done for this session. Congratulations, you're now an APA PsycInfo Pro. Best of luck in your research!